Guys, welcome to Fish Hook. I'm Charles. Today we're going to do a little discussion on what I use for bow hunting. And I'll give you a little history. When I go hunting, yes, I shoot with my guns, rifles, shotgun, and then a bow and arrow. Now I've got choices in the field of archery. I got a choice of a compound bow, a crossbow, and a recurve, and a long bow. I'll put them in the same category. I chose the latter. I chose a recurve. I did this many years ago. I got introduced to it. I, my buddy Gary in Alaska, I used to live there, and gave me a 79 pound bow. I never shot a bow before, couldn't hit the side of a barn. And I said, okay, let's try it. So we went in the woods and there began the adventure. I couldn't believe how well I was able to estimate distances. I learned this. It was a series of practice, 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 walking through the woods, shooting stumps, tree leaves, branches, mounds, picking out a specific target, aiming small, which has stayed with me my entire life to this day and will remain if you're going to be successful in, in hunting with a bow and arrow. <clears throat> I'm glad I stuck with this. I don't care for mechanical means such as a crossbow or a compound bow that just doesn't do it for me. I love this. I don't make my own bows. What I'm shooting is a <clears throat> reflex deflex bow. It's a modified long bow. As you can see, it's just a little bit reflex deflex right here. This particular one is a 17 inch riser and I've got long style long bow rounds. <clears throat> this particular one my other uh, takedown recurves were bolt on two Allen bolts, two Allen bolts. This has one, but this is a different one. I'll get up and I'll show you this. This one is a ILF. And you have a limb bolt and then you have another uh, head here that has a pin that's spring loaded that locks into place like an alignment. And it keeps this locked in. The beauty of an ILF is that you can adjust it. You can screw this limb bolt in with the, without the string on it. You can have the, see this gap here? That gap will virtually disappear, be a little bit more upright with your bow, and you will get the max poundage out of it. So if it's a 50 pound bow, they say you have 5% plus or 5% minus in poundage. You can adjust it by adjusting your limb, both of them equally. So it was a new thing. I experimented. I started with an inexpensive bow ILF and I loved it. I've hunted with it, been very successful. Did tons of target shooting in the woods. And I've yet, over the last four years, I've yet to have my first failure. Now, my, this particular setup, two different manufacturers. This particular riser is a Pentalon riser that I bought from Lancaster. They had it on sale. I think I paid like $229. It's the most expensive riser I've ever paid for. And I know they range. You can spend thousands on those. I don't want to do that. My limbs, they were $189 a set. Yes, unfortunately, they're made in China. Shame on us that we can't market the same thing and make it a reasonable price. Comparable bow limbs like this cost upwards of $400 to $500 a set, and it goes up from there. Or you know what? You got $1,000 to $1,500 tied up in a bow that... I'm just not going to do that. I've got a bunch of these. I own at least four or five that I use frequently. These are just little string silencers. 
in the world of bow hunting, traditional, we there's a couple of things we mention a lot. There's poundage on a bow, there's draw length, and this is what you're comfortable. Everybody has a different draw length. I have 31 and a half inch, 2364 cedar shafts. This is all I shoot. I don't shoot carbon, I don't shoot nothing else. And I make all my own arrows, as you'll see in some new videos that we got coming. I'll be fletching with you. This is the fletching. I'll be making an arrow from start to finish. And I'll show you just how simple it really is and how short a time it takes to do that. I have field tips. These are 125 grain. My arrows with a 125 grain field tip, they're glued on with hot melt glue, which we'll go over that at an, in another video, why I do that. I got five to five and a half inch turkey feathers. I do a right helical. That means it curves to the right the feathers because your arrow spins and then this is a knock this is called a knock as well as the knock on the string but this arrow knock these particular ones if you could see here they have a little raised ridge and index we call it that lines up with your cock feather so when I pull back I could do this in the dark with three fingers underneath, I slide it right up. That's the, I'm more comfortable with that. And then this, all I have to do is feel this. And I know right away that it's properly lined up on the boat. So my draw length is 30. This is where I draw. There's my finger at the end. If I'm out all the way, there it is. 30 inches. So anywhere from 29 to 30 inches, I shoot these. And... I have a chronograph, the speeds I've been able to maintain, and I'm not into speed at all. This is just as a point of reference. I'm not a speed freak on that. I'm not a guy that's crazy. Oh, I gotta shoot more and more pounds. 35, 40 pounds, you'll kill a deer. As the closer you get, you don't need a 50, 60 pound bow, you don't. I'm very comfortable between 51 and 56 pounds. Sometimes I adjust this, I'm shooting pulling 58. All depends on how I feel that day. The, um, the overall weight with my setup, just based on 125 grain, whether field point or, and I shoot a lot of three bladed and two blade 125 grain. I shoot all the way up to 300 grain. Different situations call for different tactics. This weight is 646 grains it's a heavy arrow so i use the chronograph i was just curious for curiosity and i use it for my rifle too i'm pulling between a, i'd say the upper 140s to 153 feet per second out of a heavy piece of wood like this it's unbelievable how heavy these are and how um fast I can get them. That is tremendous penetration. Let me give you something, a little analogy. You can have a car, a little car going 50 miles an hour. It's going to hit a brick wall. You can have a locomotive, same distance, weighs probably 50,000 pounds, hit that brick wall doing 50 miles an hour. What do you think is going to do more damage? The locomotive and I'm doing a very exaggerated example there's more inertia there's more energy with a hunk a heavy piece a heavy object going that speed will do indeterminable amount of damage and penet penetration is what we care about with a deer now, and one other piece of arsenal that you'll have with you all the time, you'll have your wax, you'll have removable tips with you, and your tabs or string or, or the glove. I'm going to tell you the safest way to string up your bow, as we call it. We do not, 
I do not like to, I was a proponent of putting it between your legs, putting it that way, resting it down there like that, and then you bend it. You don't want to do that because of that for fear. I'm going to either twist the limbs or bust one of these tips, and I'm not going to damage it. What we do here is, there's a bowstring, they're about 11, 12 bucks. They come with, every time you buy something like a bowstring or something, they give you a bowstring. It's pretty nice. This goes on your lower limb. It's bigger, it's bigger as you can tell the difference right here. That's a small one. This goes on your bow tip. Your bottom tip is what you really got to protect. You got to make a big bite on that. And I'll unstring this bow for you and show you just how easy this is done. Right over that Saunders bow tip protector, I get a nice tight fit. Put this on the tip here. That's all you got to do. Center that string underneath your foot. Now I'm going to pull up. In fact, I'll angle the camera down. I want you to see this. Let's do it a little bit more. Right. Just get your foot in there like that. Just center it. You're going to pull up and then you're going to lock, slide this until it fits into the top groove in your top tip. It's bending, bending. A little bit more. Hold on. There we go. Back to normal. It's all hooked up. And that is what putting a bow string on is all about. That's how easy it is. So I'm trying to keep, the, the pro point of all this is to keep myself loaded with as little bit as possible, as light as possible, just with the least amount of necessary items. Should this thing get popped off, I can pop it back on real easy, compact, throw it in the backpack and run. Put it together, one, two, three. It's great, I don't have to adjust this anymore, it's set. <clears throat> and always check it because sometimes it does move. You have to have that one Allen wrench with you. But that's <clears throat> what I do when I uh, go bow hunting. On another video, I'll go over with you my form, um, how I shoot with these arrows. Whether I'm practicing or not, I use my hunting weights for everything. The reason I said I shoot between 125 grain and up to 300 grain, and, and probably more in the future, for thicker skin animal like hog and others, if I'm close, I want a really good hit, really good penetration. So I want a little bit more weight. I want that inertia, that impact. I'm more after impact than anything else. Whether it passes through or not, I don't care. I, want to, I, I need to get penetration. That's the most important thing. Now I'll bring you a little close up. I'll show you why I chose ILF limbs. Is that not easy? This is what the limb looks like. See that pin? That pin gets depressed into, if you could see the slot, trying to get it where you can, there we go. There's a recess slot in there that it locks into place. And this is an adjustable limb. Now look at the, first how easy, snaps into place. All right, see that gap right there, right here? If I were to tighten this limb bolt down while it's unstrung, I can get the bow like that and make it even more rigid, creating thereby even more poundage on the boat. This is a B, I believe, 57, <clears throat> 16 strand Dacron string. And you, your height here should be on this one, seven and a half to eight and a half, perfect tuning of the bow. This distance right here, 
to the inside curve. You measure that. When on this particular one, when I'm at seven and three quarters to eight and a quarter, I'm perfect. Absolutely as quiet as can be and accurate, accurate, accurate. That's all I can tell you. It's deadly in the woods. I have brass knocks. Now, these bow limbs, I wanted to tell you, it is DOS bows. DOS is, Lancaster also makes their proprietary uh, version of an ILF hookup. And then there's the ILF, the standard international limb fitting. I opted for that. Their name is still on here. So kudos for everything here from Lancaster. They sell good products and they're good help on the phone. So getting back to what I shoot, I've got $229 tied up, $189, not even $400 in this one. All my other ones are right at $325 for a complete setup, including a string and silencers. So I try to keep it as reasonable as I can. Why do I, why do I shoot? bow and arrow. Why do I go with traditional? There's something, if you're really an outdoors person, guy or girl, you go in the woods, it kind of evens the playing field. It did something to my psyche. When I was in Alaska, we were there for about four years, and I'm using a recurve, and it doesn't really make a difference. It was traditional archery. Let me tell you, something happens to you if you have a love of the woods and hunting and for preservation. I can go out there with a rifle and shoot everything up. There's so much more satisfaction. This is for me. When I get out of shooting this, kind of, it does level the playing field. Do I get every animal I hit? Nope. No way. Not as good as some of these other guys, I guess. I do my fair share, and it causes me to step up my game. So therefore, I have to really get on their terms in order to get them. If I'm sneaking up on a rabbit, I'm sneaking up on a doe, turkey, oh my goodness. You gotta be solid. You gotta barely move and carefully guard your steps. And then know your distances. My distances that I practice with are anywhere from like five yards to 25 yards. Ideally, I want to kill something at 15 or less. I don't even want to shoot 15 yards. One, there's always the outside chance you're going to miss. You're going to overestimate. And you got to know the trajectory of a bow, of an arrow. It goes similar to a bullet. It leaves the bow, it goes up, it crests, and comes back down, and then eventually it goes down and down. So you have to learn that adjustment. I'm an instinctive shooter. Some of you guys are brand new to this. I really encourage you to start out with poundage is not what you look at when you pick a bow. You pick something you're comfortable with, you're going to start less if you're brand new. You might be starting with 30 pounds, 35 pounds. Girls, maybe 20 pounds, 25. And it depends on your physique and your muscles. Use your upper back muscles. It is fabulous. Feels just, I mean, you know, I've got a weapon in my hand and I'm on their turf and I got to work it the way they work it or I come home with nothing. What I else I use here. I shoot three fingers under the knock, and I use a tab, a good cordovan leather tab I made by American Leather. They're not the best in the business, their company. And they have a three finger version that is fabulous. This I really like. It takes a little while for it to get really soft and pliable, and it has a loose flap behind it. And I'm telling you, it works beautiful. Right underneath, and you pull back. Real easy to do. Another thing you'll want to do to your bow that I've done, I put on a, made by Saunders Archery, 
bow tip protector on the lower lip. This, in my opinion, has been the best thing ever to protect my bows because you're naturally going to be standing them up. I try to keep it on my foot, but you will on the ground. So this protector is really nice. I could stand it there. Don't bang it around. You want to have a lot of respect because these tips, if they break, game is over. These particular tips from DOS, another reason I like their things, I should have told you this before. Look how thick they beefed up these tips. I love it. And it's a very sleek limbs. I, wanted, I want to be invisible in the woods if I could be. But I really, really like this. It shoots fabulous. What I do to maintain my string, they make a thing called string wax, bow wax. This is a beekeeper version of a hard. I got this again from Lancaster. Very inexpensive. And as you can see the groove in there, I just rub it like this. I'll, get, I'll go around like that. Then I'll take my hand. It's nice and hot. You know what it's like rubbing a string if it's hot? I'm impregnating that wax into, and I do all of this, but just to show you, that's how you protect your string. Because this is my tool to protect my life in the woods. I'm on a hunt. I'm the hunter. I go through thick brush. I'm moving stuff with my bow sometimes. Limbs rub against this. All of that will slowly deteriorate this. This is how you protect your 16 strands. Excellent. Excellent. So that's a good thing. Not a big investment, but it works great. Bow, bow wax. And you really want the hard one. Better than what's in the tube. That's the best one I've seen in all the years I've been doing this. But that's what I use for hunting. The exhilaration of hitting the target. The beautiful thing, let me explain this. The beautiful thing, and I'm not trying to bore you, but I'm trying to give you a pretty concise picture. And then on forthcoming videos, we'll talk a whole lot more in detail about form, how I shoot, how I practice. You'll, I think you guys and girls will really enjoy that. The uh, area of focus, when I, when I practice shooting, uh, if I have a 3D target, as you'll see in some of the videos, behind my house in Tennessee where I live, I've got really big 3D targets. I've got a lot of land, and I've got backstops behind them. I'll pick, they might have it lined out. This is where the lungs are, the vitals, and so forth. I pick the hair and the ointment. You pick something out on that, and as you're pulling back, your eye should never, don't look at the bow, never, if you're going to be successful as a traditional bow hunter, you keep your eye on it and you aim small. If you pick the hair in that area that's maybe on the size of a deer, could be as big as 12 inch round like a basketball area that you got to hit where all the vitals are and the nerve. You get it anywhere in there. That deer is a dead animal. You've scored. You've succeeded. There's a big difference than doing target shooting. Nothing against it, but there's a whole different paradigm out here. We do limited target shooting, but our targets are bigger, and our area of success is way bigger. Now, obviously, when you're shooting little gophers, little woodchucks, you got smaller, but I think with the right size broadhead or blunt anywhere on that animal he's a dead he's a dead animal so putting the really small critters aside the general area is the top of the shoulder to behind the shoulder right that area the front shoulder and on the bigger the animal the bigger your circle you still pick out the hair in that target so if you aim small, you'll hit that. But if you look at the whole deer, and I'm training my grandkids on this, 
if you look at the whole deer, they're going to be three, four foot all over the place. Because your arrow doesn't always go exactly where you want it. It doesn't. It can go really close. But in hunting, the area, the kill area, the vital area is big. The lungs aren't this. The lungs are like this. The heart is a big heart. If you get in the lungs within minutes, that animal's going to suffocate and die. So guys, in conclusion, these are some of the reasons why I got into bow hunting and particularly traditional. Um, if you're interested in this, if I've sparked an interest, leave me a comment. If you have any questions or anything else you'd like me to discuss in the world of bow hunting traditional like I do, please send me a comment. Tell me what you'd like me to get involved in and show you and I'll do that I would like to get some feedback from all you guys and ladies this is a big ladies sport as well it's not just for us there's so many ladies out there doing this and husband and wife teams my wife does it and <clears throat> she loves it she shoots a, a recurve bow 35 pound and man she is spot on she's real good but <clears throat> I taught her the way I did it, and then, just like her, you guys will naturally develop your style, what you're comfortable with, and you'll find out what makes for an accurate shot. And that's what you need to zero in on. I hope you enjoyed this. I like doing this. I'll do, I'm going to do a lot more of these. And if you have <clears throat> any suggestions, anything, please leave them in the comments. If you can hit the subscribe button, that would be wonderful. You can give me a big like and be notified when the uh, next video is out. I would really appreciate that. It does good for the algorithm, how YouTube does it. So we really want to get make this ship really go to the next level. I can't do it without you guys. And again, again, let me always say thank you for subscribing to the channel. Thank you for staying faithful and not failing on me over the last two years or so. Okay, guys, we'll see you on the next one.